All right, uh, my name is Amy. Uh, my channel is called The Hag Reads. Um, and I'm just going to jump right into this booktube newbie tag and start answering the questions. Um, why did I start this channel? Well, I have been around since January, kind of watching videos. I don't remember what the first thing that I looked at, and I uh, found a booktube video. But I remember watching the first couple and then clicking on other channels that were in the recommended section and being so excited to find other people who love to read and who were talking about it and making videos about it. And so I subscribed to a bunch of channels. Uh, I'm probably subscribed to 50 or 60 of them. And I regularly get to watch about 20 of those. And I kind of cycle through and try and hit the other ones. And um, I really have enjoyed just discovering it as a thing. And I thought, why not, you know? And then I, you know, for a while I just watched the videos and then I got into looking at the comment section and I found that I got a lot of recommendations that way. Other people recommending to the people in the video. And then just the general feeling of camaraderie that comes in the comment section. Um, the back and forth dialogue that is sort of present there. I think it probably more of it goes on on Twitter which I am not a big fan of and which I don't use very often. I find it to be a huge time sink and I just have trouble keeping up with it. But I know that there's a lot of booktube activity on Twitter. Um, question number two, what are some fun and unique things that I bring to booktube? Probably not a whole lot. Um, there's a lot of people on here doing this. Um, something unique about me is probably my age. Uh, most booktubers appear to be in their doing 18 and 25. And um, as I said, I just turned 46. So uh, probably twice as old as most of the people on here. Although I have seen and am subscribed to a few older uh, booktubers my age, maybe a little bit older. And I have immensely enjoyed their content. Um, it's a good mix having older people and younger people, I think I get a good mix of uh, opinions and recommendations and just and information in general. I also like that there's such a diverse um, spread of people. There are people in the publishing industry, uh, people who, who are writing their own books, people who are just loving to read YA. I realize that there's a, that, that is probably a majority of booktubers is people who read exclusively YA. And I do love YA and children's literature, um, specifically and probably unsurprisingly, fairy tales, fairy tale retellings, um, and mythology based uh, kind of stuff is a favorite of mine. But I, I don't read exclusively YA. I love um, nonfiction. Uh, I attend, or I, I was attending ASU working towards a bachelor's degree after having held an associate's degree for uh, about 21 years I finally decided I might go back to school and discovered um, after having a couple of minor heart attacks that I was having some memory issues and that I also am not widely enough read in, in nonfiction historical information for the period that involves um, when religious studies kind of became a thing and when psychology developed as a thing. Um, so I am taking a couple of years off and um, part of that is uh, recovery for my health so that I can focus on some health related issues and the rest of it is that I definitely have some reading that I need to do source material from uh, what are considered the founders of those uh, two fields of study and um, just history in general for the time periods of uh, from present day going back to around the time that you could say these became fields of study. Um, and then also some general history just as a refresher because I do find I have some memory problems now and I think it's just a good idea to go over some things for my own well-being and just for education in general. Um, outside of that, my uh, I don't really have anything else that's unique about me. I think that it has to do with being on booktube. Um, question number three, what are you most excited about for your new channel? Just doing it, just putting myself out there and seeing what happens. That's really all there is. And maybe to develop a few 
friendships through this or to get a greater sense of community. I don't know many adults who read a lot, um, and most of the adults I know who read, um, and this isn't a dig, read romance or a paranormal romance exclusively. And there's not, and so there's no way to discuss my current, you know, nonfiction area of obsession. <laughs> And so I think maybe I might find some people that have similar interest and uh, maybe we'll have some conversations in that area. Question number four, um, why do I love reading? Books! But um, also, um, it exposes me to new ideas uh, that I may have not been aware of or new ways to think about old ideas. Also with nonfiction and even fiction, um, with... Uh, publishing industry is now producing a lot more uh, diverse authors and cultural topics. So um, a lot of reading can be a way to explore cultures and uh, ethnicities that I might not otherwise come into contact with or experiences in life. So it gives me an opening into a glimpse into a different world that is separate from my own. Um, and that goes for, you know, it, across the globe, across the United States. You know, I have traveled some, but that doesn't mean I know everything about everywhere I've been. And I certainly love learning new things. So, um, and just because it's fun. I love reading. It's a form of escapism and I don't watch a lot of TV anymore. So books are my entertainment as well. Um, question number five, what book or series got you into reading? Um, initially, I, the earliest things I remember reading are things like Green Eggs and Ham. I loved Dr. Seuss, uh, and I had quite a few of his books, so things along those lines. I remember, um, a book called, I think maybe Hop on Pop, uh, If I Ran the Zoo, that kind of thing. Um, as I got older in my, uh, teenage years, I really, uh, got into S.E. Hinton, books like The Outsiders, Rumblefish, and I remember my mom commenting on why do you reread those so much? Why don't you read something new? And so I know I read them a lot. Um, and then a little bit later on, uh, embarrassingly enough, uh, Sweet Valley High. Those were just coming out when I was in my uh, maybe like 13, 14, 15. And I remember going to visit friends over the summer and trying to find at the local library copies to read, uh, and I couldn't find any. The, the ones they had, I had already read, and I was super disappointed about that. Um, as I surpassed 16, uh, my dad recommended to me Stephen King, and so I read uh, extensively Stephen King and kind of cheesy horror, uh, a little bit of science fiction but I stopped reading Stephen King kind of when he started naming his books after uh, women. I, th I think around Doris Claiborne. And then I picked up later The Cell and was so disappointed. So you have kind of a mixed relationship with Stephen King fiction. And um, I am currently rereading a bunch of it. So you'll probably see some uh, content in that area. Question number six. Uh, what questions do you have for your favorite booktubers? I don't have any, I don't have any significant relationship or any specific attachment to any of you yet, so I don't, there's nothing really for me to ask. Um, question seven, what challenge do you think you will face starting your booktube channel? Um, a lot of the technical stuff probably. Uh, I'm not without resources, I do have a young person in the house. Um, it's just me and my transgender son, and uh, he's a gamer, so he has technical knowledge, but he also does that eye-rolling mom thing. Like, I have to stop what I'm doing and help you out with things that are, you know, I feel like he's, it's the, you should already know this. And I'm like, mm. so. Um, and then consistency. I am an amazing procrastinator, so I will work hard on being consistent with putting videos up. Question number eight, when did I start reading? Probably kindergarten. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not close with my family, so it's not something that's been talked about very much. Um, 
I do know that I had a small library growing up with the, um, you know, children's basic reading books, the Dr. Seuss type of books. And then I had things like I had a, a hardboard, a hard back set of uh, The Wizard of Oz and uh, Through the Looking Glass. I had a set of like Black Beauty and some similar novels like that. I had a copy of Where the Sidewalk Ends. I had two pretty good sized bookshelves and um, I grew up in a military family. We moved around a lot. I don't remember any of my friends really having libraries like that of their own or owning a lot of books. And then um, I did go to the library a lot growing up. So I was always picking out books and I still love to go to the library and pick out books. Um, question number nine, where do I read? everywhere. Uh, when I worked, I read on the bus, at the bus stop, waiting to be let into work. Uh, I have read in restaurants. I have read in coffee shops. I read at home, in bed, in my favorite yellow chair. At this table, um, for academic books, for those big heavy textbooks, I love to go to the library and get on one of those big old wooden tables and plop my book down and just concentrate on reading that and I still do love to go to the library sometimes and just sit and read because it's a different environment and, and nobody's going to come ask me what's for lunch or nobody's going to call me on the phone because I turn it off when I go to the library and then uh, the final question what books do I like to read I think I mostly covered this in question one uh, fairy tale retelling psychology religious studies Divorce is a topic that's of particular interest to me uh, based on my own experiences, but just based on the prevalence of the negative things that happen in divorce. I don't think it has to be that way. I think we're just culturally trained to treat relationships ending as horribly as possible. And I think that um, based on what I read when I was getting my own divorce, there is a different way to go about it that doesn't have to be quite so damaging to the children involved. And I think I'm seeing it more in mainstream media now that it's getting attention. But um, just about anything in psychology, just about anything in religious studies, um, I, psychology that's published for the lay reader tends to be kind of self-helpy. But, you know, I'll read almost anything if it sounds interesting. And then um, my big focus is coming up for 2017, 2018, moving forward, uh, involve history and specifically the um, source material for my uh, degree areas and just uh, the time periods from when they originated uh, to present. And um, so that, that'll be a big focus for me. And I think um, that's about all I have to say. Um, looking forward to being on here, hoping to get up some videos regularly, and um, just happy to be here. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great evening, or a day, or whatever time it is. Bye!